Hey, it's Grips here, and as always, thanks for joining me. With AI technology coming along, I thought it'd be really cool if we could combine AI technology and Corel Video Studio. The photo you're seeing here in my timeline is actually generated by AI. Now, why would I use AI? Well, if I'm after something in particular, I cannot find this on the internet or through stock footage, I can get AI to create exactly what I want. And I'm gonna show you how I did this. The AI that we are using today is called Midjourney. You can simply go to midjourney.com and then join the beta group. And of all the AIs that I've been playing with, I think Midjourney, and I'll show you, absolutely makes the best content available. This is basically created by AI. And I'm going to quickly show you just how easy it is to generate these amazing photos look at that that is just incredible after you finished joining the beta group you will need to download discord now discord is an open free software mid journey is also free but there is a paid version and obviously the paid version allows you to do so much more simply once you have uh, discord installed join the mid journey chat room which is basically up here and that brings you then into their interface. And as you can see, there's many people in here already creating wonderful, wonderful artwork. As a beginner, all you wanna do is go into the newbie room. Now, once you're in the newbie room, it's very easy to create your first picture. Simply go into this chat line here and then hit the backspace. And then you'll see here, it says, imagine, imagine. And this is where you literally tell the software, imagine a mouse drinking tea sitting on a rocking chair and it will generate that picture so let's see what we can come up with so i simply typed in a gothic church ruined from a thousand years of bad weather and it came back with this result so as you can see more and more people are keep adding to it so when you do the paid version obviously you don't have that happening so let's enlarge this open up in the browser so we can really look at this now this is 100 percent original you will not find this anywhere on the internet and this is what i like about mid journey it absolutely creates fantastic artwork this is not a tutorial to teach you how to use mid journey i'm simply just showing you however if you did want to learn a little bit if i wanted to see more variations on this photo in particular i can highlight u1 and v4 and then hit the refresh and that'll give me four more variations on this one photo in particular for the tutorial i basically used this image here i just wrote giant evil gym interior ancient dark lightning and cinematic and eventually it came out with this and this is the picture that we will be using today in our tutorial First things first, in the beginning of the video, I showed you me standing basically in the supposed giant room. So let's first recreate that. All I did here was I brought in the picture from the AI and then I placed it onto the main track. Then I also made a clip of myself standing on a green screen and I put that onto the overlay. And now what I need to do is remove most of the stuff around the green screen and I'll do that by using, using, <laughs> it's a new word, using a mask. So let's go into the mask. Let's bump up the transparency all the way so we can see the original video. And then what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the lasso tool or the free hand tool and then gently just mask what I need. And I just say about here, let's join that. There we go. We're done on that one. And then all we need to do now is then mask out the green screen. And we'll do that by using the FX filter chroma key pro. Let's click and drag that and put that onto our little footage star filter chroma key pro let's just start off with using the green key template right here and that done a pretty decent job what i always do is go to none chroma key and i can use this photo here to see or also here if everything is chromed out now obviously i still got a little bit of white there so let's see if i can throw a little bit more sensitivity in there and hopefully we can fix that up a bit or maybe even drag it down a bit basically what i'm going to do here is just make some slight adjustments to get the best possible effect let's have a look at that none all right that looks pretty good 
what I need to do now is scale this down to sort of that matches what I'm after. Now, before I go on, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a slight feather to it. Otherwise, it's not going to make the illusion very good because the outline would be too sharp. So let's just throw a feather here of four. And it gives you a little bit of a blur on the edges and it just it's a little bit more convincing. And that should do it and press OK. All I need to do now is scale this down a bit to make it more in line with the picture itself. I've still got a little bit of blue at the feet here and we'll uh, have to remove that as well. The next thing I did, I created another video footage of myself, this time more of a close up. And just for a dramatic effect, I got a little blue light sitting here on a stool and that just kind of gives me some shadows in my face to give me that illusion right there. So let's do the same thing. Let's chroma key and mask this out and get this footage ready. Think that did a pretty decent job in masking that out it looks pretty well ready now you can obviously color correct both the photo and the image of the background but i think i'm pretty close to the look that i'm after the next thing i did was i grabbed some elements i got them from the ae juice pack i've shown you this in early tutorials but you can get these from any stock video library that's on the internet. And what this, what this little element does, it creates more of a dust particles in the background. I'm in a dirty, dusty place, so I highly doubt it that it's going to be squeaking clean. So I'm going to create the illusion that there is debris floating around. And all I'm going to do here is, as you can see, this is the element. I'll give you a little preview. And it's just you know, dirt and dust everywhere. I'm going to double click on it click in it and click on it and then what i'm going to do is use the chroma key in the tab so chroma key and i'm just going to remove the black and there you go and then i'll do the same for here as well you can now also see i've got it adds a bit of feeling or a bit of an atmosphere to the footage to do the next one i'll just do the copy and paste so copy attributes highlight this right click paste all attributes and it'll do the same thing. It will remove basically the back background. And again, I need one more like that. So I'll just copy and paste that. Copy, paste, done. And then I'm just gonna bring that into line. I could have done that for the first one as well, but hey, sometimes I just don't think. <laughs> so that's guys. Now, now we've got that bit of a speckled and dust and dirty feel to the actual video. One more element that I'm gonna add is a vape or smoke basically going to drop and drag that onto the timeline like so i'm just going to push it right to the beginning of the project and then instead of using the chroma key i'm going to be lazy and do a shortcut to copy the attributes right click and i'm going to paste the attributes and it does the same thing right so obviously you can, you can see here it's slightly off so i'm going to pull it down a little bit and that just creates a bit of a smoky haze look to the project as well and in other words it just gives you more of a feeling that it's a dirty dusty place look at that pretty cool we're almost there i just need to add in the boulder effects that's right me raising my hands and lifting all these boulders as if i had some magical power so i'm going to watch my hands and as they start to rise this is where i want the boulders to appear so i'm going to put a cube marker here which just tells me this is where I need that footage to start or the boulder footage to start. And then to get the footage, I just went to YouTube, typed in floating boulders, and it came back with this. And I thought, well, that's all I actually need. So I'm gonna click and drag that and place that onto my timeline, like so. And then I need to chroma key this one out. So let's just double click that, chroma key, and check yes, and voila, we're done. So obviously this footage is longer than it should be and I, I will obviously adjust that, and, which is done really, really easy actually. Now I also noticed that the clip came with a soundtrack and obviously I don't want that because I got my own soundtrack. So I'm gonna right click, audio, and then mute it. And then let's have a look to see if the timing is right. And I'll show you a real quick and easy way to fix that timing if it's slightly off. 
So my hands, as they rise, I want the boulders to appear. But there's also a section where as I clinch my fist, the boulders just drift in midair. So let's have a look. So I clench my fist. And now the boulders should just hang there. So to me, the boulders start to come in uh, too late. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight my clip. I'm going to press down the Alt key. And I'm going to use my right arrow key to shift that clip frame by frame. And I'm going to release it. So I'm going to just do that again. I'm going to hold down my Alt key. And I can shift right by using the right arrow key frame by frame. This then gives me really good placement on exactly how I want this clip to be. Now clinch. See, it's still a bit too early, so I can move this clip more and more. But instead of me sitting here trying to get it absolutely perfect, let's move on to the next section. And that's just simply adding a cool little sound or a music score that goes well with what I'm doing. Adding the music in is obviously the easy part, but I will show you something that I do, and that is I have this the preview scrubber enabled. And to, to get that, go settings, preferences, and just enable the preview scrubber. All right, so let's get out of that. And the reason why I have this, and I'll show you in a minute, is I click and drag the music onto my timeline. And going here, this is the little mark we put in earlier to show me that's where the hands lift. So this is where I want the music to become you know, more dominant or this is where the impact of the music starts. So let's shorten this. I'm going to place my mark here and I'm going to drag it. So I know if it's getting close or not. So I'm still way off so I can shrink it again like so. And I'm going to place it round right about where the music really starts to pick up. And then I can, there you go, a bit more bit more, bit more, bit more. All right, now I'm gonna drag that back out to the beginning. And I'm very close to, I think, is where my hands rise and the music should become you know, strong and really emphasize that point. Let's have a listen. Oh, not over there, <laughs> over here. So there you go. So pretty close. I don't have to mess around moving the, the music score back and forth constantly just by using this little preview scrubber. And there you go. Well, hopefully I gave you something new to play with like AI and using Corel Video Studio to create something completely unique and different. And as always, thanks for watching.